As you all know by now, I believe planning for your future is important when it comes to building wealth and becoming financially free. One of the most critical steps is looking at ways you can invest your money to maximize your returns. Webull is an all-in-one, self-directed investment platform that provides an amazing user experience. Some of the key features are zero commission, free real-time quotes, multi-platform accessibility, full extended trading hours, and 24-7 online help. Create an account by clicking on my exclusive link in the show notes, and Webull will will give you two free stocks valued up to $250. Even better, deposit funds into your Webull account, and they will give you an additional stock valued up to $1,400. Start investing today with Webull, and thank yourself tomorrow. Welcome to the Financially Free Journey podcast, and I am your host, Courtney Dyer. This podcast aims to dispel the seemingly complex topic of personal finances, money management, debt, credit, investing, and even retirement. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about credit applications. And if you want your credit application approved, you're going to want to listen up. Now, have you ever heard of the term, the five C's of credit? Now, don't worry if you haven't, you are not alone if this is new to you. If you've ever wondered what exactly is, what is the bank looking at when they're underwriting your credit application, you are in for a treat today. It's important to understand what the five C's are so you can work on your credit report fitting within the lender's standards and give yourself a better opportunity to get the best rates and the best terms available. Now, the five C's of credit is a system used by lenders to understand you better as a possible person that they're going to be lending their money to. Lenders want to mitigate any risk possible that they're taking, and by evaluating the five quote-unquote C's, they're going to be able to determine how much risk is associated with lending money to you. Now, keep in mind that the five C's are both quantitative and qualitative measures. Number one, the first C is character. Now, character usually refers to your credit history. Your credit history is all of your past debts and collections who have reported to the three major credit bureaus to compile your character. This takes into account your credit history for a minimum of seven years, but really up to 10 years, and it includes any collection account and bankruptcy that you have filed. Also, in your character section, you are going to want to remember that if you have been subject to a lien or a judgment, banks do check reports like LexisNexis Risk Review in order to really better understand your character. Remember, as I mentioned, it's qualitative and quantitative measurements. Keep in mind, if you have had something negative that pertains to your character, many lenders will actually give you an opportunity to explain the item and really the circumstances that surrounded that event on your credit history. A lot of people that are mortgage lenders will really ask you for a letter of explanation when it comes to a negative event in your credit history. So really keep that in mind if you do have something on your credit report that you're concerned about. Character is a combination, as I mentioned, of quantitative and qualitative measures to really determine what your character outcome is going to be. Number two, the second C is capacity. Now, capacity to a lender measures your ability to repay a loan by comparing your income to your reoccurring debts to see if you would actually be able to maintain and sustain the payments you already have to the existing credit and also adding in that new credit that you're asking for. This is called your debt to income ratio. Your debt to income ratio is determined by adding together your total monthly debt payments and dividing it by your gross monthly income. The lower your debt to income ratio is, the better. An industry standard is for your debt to income ratio to be 35% or lower in order for you to be considered for new credit to be approved. If your debt to income goes over 35%, the lender considers it to be too risky to lend you money. So keep in mind that this ratio doesn't include your living expenses like rent, utilities, food, gas, etc. That ratio only considers debts that are reporting to the credit bureaus, which is why the ratio needs to be below 35%. 
Another thing to remember is that letters, uh, lenders look at your gross monthly income, which remember is your income before taxes. So if you take into account those different factors, having a debt to income ratio close to 35% is extremely risky and it puts you in a very precarious situation. Investing and diversifying your funds within the stock market is a top strategy that the wealthy use in order to continue to build their wealth. If you're trying to strengthen your financial health and have ever thought about investing, Webull is a platform you need to check out. Webull was designed by top experts in the financial and tech industries to create a streamlined and simple user experience. Webull knows that you, as the individual investor, is an important part of the market and you should not be ignored. You should feel empowered with better information, tools, services, opportunities, and lower costs. Some of the key features are zero commission, free real-time quotes, multi-platform accessibility, full extended trading hours, 24-7 24-7 online help. Create an account by clicking on my exclusive link in the show notes and Webull will give you two free stocks valued up to $250. Even better, deposit funds into your Webull account and they'll give you an additional stock valued up to $1,400. Start your investing journey today with Webull. Okay, the third C is capital. Have you ever heard of a, the saying, you need to have skin in the game? That's capital when you're thinking about getting credit. Lenders want to see that you have skin in the game, aka money on the line too, when it comes to borrowing money for a purchase or an investment. That's why when you're buying a car or a home, they typically require a down payment from you and a loan to cover the rest of the purchase. The larger of a monetary contribution you put into a purchase, the better the lender feels about, obviously, lending you money for the rest of the purchase. Even special programs like FHA, for example, they require someone to put down 3.5% of the purchase of a home. Another factor to keep in mind is that the size of your down payment actually can affect the rate you receive on your loan. If you put down just the minimum down payment required to purchase a home, typically you're going to be paying a higher interest rate than someone that came in with more money down. Another example of how your down payment can affect you is something called PMI. When purchasing a home, you can qualify for programs that require less than 20% down on a home, but you're going to have to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance every month until you've paid off at least 20% of your uh, your home, the equity in your home, and then you refinance the loan to drop the insurance. And remember that PMI is just money that goes down the drain every month that does not apply towards your home. So when planning on major purchases like a home or a car, keep in mind that your capacity to pay or your skin in the game can dictate your approval for the loan and really the, the terms that you receive as well. Okay, the fourth C is collateral. Now, collateral is essentially an insurance policy for a lender that if you default on the agreement to repay them, that they have recourse to get some of their investment back. So for example, when you buy a car and you obtain an auto loan, your car is taken as collateral. And if you default on the loan, the lender has the right to repossess the car and then to sell it to recoup their investment of money that they lent you. Same concept applies to purchasing a home or any collateral back loan, really, that you may apply for. If you're trying to recover from bad debt, for example, you may be required to obtain collateral or to pledge collateral in order to get approved for credit at all. An example of this is a secured credit card. If you want to reestablish credit and apply for a credit card, you may be required to actually pledge the same amount of money you're asking for as your limit in order to get approved. So while this is a great tool to use to rebuild your credit, it can really defeat the purpose as a lot of people seeking credit typically don't have the funds available to pledge as collateral. Okay, the next C is conditions. Now, conditions is an interesting factor to approving a loan because this can really refer to the conditions within you as the borrower, within your control, and then also conditions that are completely outside of your control. An example of conditions is to really look at the purpose of a loan that you're asking for to obtain. Let's say that you're applying for a car loan or a mortgage. This loan has a very specific and obvious purpose that the lender can really understand and approve. 
If you apply for a line of credit or a signature loan, for example, this can be a lot harder to get approved because the purpose of the loan is ambiguous and the loan can virtually be used for anything. So conditions can also apply, as I mentioned, to things that are out of your control. And this is really talking about uh, things that are economic factors that can come into play when applying for a loan. So An example of this is I want you to think back on the years that directly followed the recession. Obtaining credit was next to impossible, no matter how good or bad your credit was. Why? The economic factors indicated that repayment was way too risky for lenders, and they really closed their doors on lending completely. And I want you guys to remember that knowledge is power. Now that you understand what the lenders and bankers and underwriters are using to judge you, I want you to take this newfound knowledge and I want you to use it to your advantage. Plan ahead and prepare for the lenders that you may need to to talk to in the future. One of my favorite sayings is that the best time to get credit is when you don't need it. So plan ahead and take the steps you need to look the best that you can on paper. And again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you're not already, please go follow us on uh, Twitter. It's uh, Financially J, Instagram at Financially Free Journey. I post daily tips and motivation to help you on your financially free journey. Until next time. Have you heard of Weeble? It's a simple, easy-to-use platform for investors just like you. Create an account by clicking on my exclusive link in the show notes, and Weeble will give you two free stocks valued up to $250. Even better, deposit funds of any amount into your Weeble account, and they'll give you another additional stock valued up to $1,400. Start your investing journey today with Weeble and thank yourself tomorrow.